talking about. As a result of the Daishonin casting off the transient, excuse, excuse me, and revealing the true, the path of attaining enlightenment in one person's in one's present form, whereby we can attain we can manifest Buddhahood in our ordinary mortal lives, just as we are, was open to all people. So do you understand that? Why he says, I am the father, I am the mother, I'm the parent, teacher, and sovereign? He's not being arrogant. It's by virtue of what he's accomplished with his own life that now opens the way for all others to follow. Everybody's with me, right? Okay. So he says, as he describes in detail in the opening of the eyes, he won his fundamental victory of life, the victory of casting off the transient and revealing the true in the course of his relentless struggle to surmount persecution after persecution and triumph over obstacles. In the same way, when we maintain courageous faith, unafraid of any obstacles, then no matter what happens, we too can defeat the darkness of ignorance and establish a self that manifests our enlightened Dharma nature. This is how we cast off our own transient aspect and reveal our true selves. Casting off the transient and revealing the true is essential to our attainment in, of Buddhahood in this lifetime. Now, what did he just say there? That was a great paragraph. Let me start at the top again. He says, as he describes in detail in the opening of the eyes, he won this fundamental victory of life. Now, what's the fundamental victory of life? What is the fundamental victory of life? We're talking about life victories. What's the fundamental victory of life? To be, to be, a, to be, a, to be realized. To be awakened. Exactly. To be awakened. Yes. To realize that you're the Buddha. This is that. That's the fundamental. That's, that's from. That's like darkness to light. Okay. So that's the fundamental transition of your life. Everything prior to actual each and uns, actual, action in each and actual each and sunset is transient. It's. It's, it's a theoretical. It's not necessarily going to stick. Buddhahood, actual Ichin and Sanzen, is carried over lifetime after lifetime over lifetime. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Don't forget, the devil is in heaven still in the life of everybody up to the, uh, near, the, stage of, the 51st stage of near-perfect enlightenment. Even the 52nd stage. What's the difference between near-perfect enlightenment and the 51st, 51st stage of near-perfect enlightenment? Having overcome fundamental darkness. Having overcome fundamental darkness. What is having overcome fundamental darkness? Realizing at the core of your life that you are the Buddha and no other thought or circumstance or, or, or phenomena can take mm. that away. Mm. That's the point in time. Okay, do you understand? That's when it's no longer theoretical. Because theoretical, you'll go back and you'll, you'll reject it. It's rejectable as long as it's theoretical. Once it's actualized, you can't get rid of it. Mm. Do you understand? Okay, so he's saying, in the course of his relent, okay, the, uh, the fundamental victory of life, the victory of casting off the transient and revealing the true, the casting off of the nine worlds and accessing the tenth that's inherent within them, okay, that exists only by virtue of them. Do you understand? It's not a separate world you can catch without the other nine, okay? In the course of his relentless struggle to surmount persecution after persecution and triumph over obstacles. What is that? That's the practice of Mugi Washi. This all comes down to doubt-free faith. That is the only thing that will take you from the theoretical into the state of actualization. All right? Doubt-free faith is the only... That's taking the vow. That's becoming a bodhisattva of the earth. That's saying... The most important thing in my life is to not let down the Gohonzon, to not let down the people that are obviously dependent upon my advance. It's taking the teachings completely to your heart. Literally believing in this. Believing in yourself as the Buddha with a mission for Kosen Rufu. Believing there's no separation between you and the Gohonzon. Okay? In the same way. In the same way. So he says, in the same way. Just like Nietzsche. When we maintain courageous faith, like he did, unafraid of any obstacles, like he was, then no matter what happens, we too can defeat the darkness of ignorance and establish... What's defeating the darkness of ignorance? That's defeating the devil of the sixth heaven. That's fundamental darkness. That means you have now been able to successfully realize your Buddhahood. 
Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That's defeating the devil. When you say, talk about defeating the devil of the sixth heaven, that's the defeat that we're referring to. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right. And establish a, a self that manifests our enlightened Dharma nature, our Buddhahood, that manifests our Buddhahood, our tenth world. This is how we can cast off our own transient aspect of the nine worlds and reveal our true selves, the tenth world aspect of our lives. Casting off the transient and revealing the true is essential to our attainment of Buddhahood in this lifetime. Why is it essential? Because that's exactly what it is. All right? It's essential because one cannot exist without the other having occurred. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Everybody's with me, right? Yes. yes. All right, so as Nietzsche indicates when he says, here a single individual has been used as an example, but the same thing applies equally to all living beings. He speaks of himself, but he says, hey, this is talking about everybody. This is everybody, not just me, not just Shakyamuni. Not just whoever else has been able to accomplish actual each and sends it. Right. Understand? Mm -hmm. He says, and that's a quote from the unanimous declaration uh, by the Buddhas, which we've read at least once. Mm -hmm. His casting off the transient and revealing the truth elucidates the basic principle for attaining Buddhahood that applies to all people of the latter day of the law. It is also proof of this principle as a, and as an example for others. So what's what's it what's it, what is it that that it elucidates? What did he elucidate there? Faith to the last moment of his life, not begrudging his life, being willing to support the law even at the cost of his life, allowing them to take him to tra to Tatsunakuchi. What preceded Tatsunakuchi? A sit down with Haino Seiman after the court officials had pulled his ass to be sat down. And then they questioned him and said, did you really say all this stuff? Did you say that the temple should be burned off, burned down, and the this and that? He goes, yeah. Read the actions of the votary of the Lotus Sutra. <clears throat> That's when they said, write this guy up and get him down to the beach. All right? He wouldn't back off a bit. <laughs> all right? Understand that. He wouldn't back down at all. And that's what made them say, hey, let's exp the expedient thing is just to get rid of this guy. All right? That's the same thing for us. When we stand up in faith for the teaching that Nietzsche has left us, which Daisaku Akeda is clear clearly elucidating here, to say this isn't just about Nietzsche, this is about every single one of us. This isn't, just, this isn't about me. This is about all of you. All right? Um, then this is the proof and the principle and an example for others. Just as we are when we do it. That's why it's so essential that we be able to accomplish this same thing that's been demonstrated by Nietzsche. It can't just be Nietzsche. It can't just be Daisaku Akeda. It's got to be common believers that are able to bring forth actual Nietzsche and sons in their lives and demonstrate it and live by it and become the examples that he's talking about that Nietzsche was. That's how it goes on from generation to generation. All people, if they possess unwavering faith in the mystic law, what's that mean? No doubt. Doubt-free faith, yeah. mugi washing. Yeah. So all people, if they possess mugi washing in the, in the mystic law, can develop a state of being as vast as the universe in their flesh and blood lives as ordinary people. They become Buddhas in their actual existence as Nine world common mortals. You should say that Nietzsche and Daishun was the very first person, and he was, to demonstrate that truth that all people of the latter day could cast off the transient and reveal the true in a single lifetime by practicing the Buddhism of the sowing. Does the teaching that allows for this to be the case exist anywhere outside of Nietzsche's teachings? No. no. Okay? That's why it's so significant that he lives as the example of the person that did this because that validates his teaching as being the true teaching. Do you understand? And all the accompanying shit that went with it. That's the other part that validates it as the true teaching. It didn't come without resistance. It came with great resistance. It came at, the, at a juxtaposition of, are you willing to die for this? That's really what it came down to. Are you willing to die for this? Nietzsche mm -hmm. says, put me on the freaking horse. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Do your worst. That's why he had all that attitude when the light came over. Did he fully expect the light to come over? No, but it was okay. But when the light came over, 
the light went on. He knew exactly what to do. All right? To verify his casting off the transient and revealing the true and to provide a clear mirror or means so that others could do the same, Nitrin manifested the Gohonzon in a concrete graphic form. So in a single lifetime, we can all ascertain the three types of learning. We can function as Buddhas in truth, not in theory. Do you understand? Yes. We, can, we can have a direct relationship with the original teacher. Do you understand? That's the Gohonzon. We're never separated from the original teacher. Don't forget, Nitrin was a transient status. Right? Yeah. He's the original teacher. You want to go to his true identity. He's the teacher of the Buddha of the latter day of the law. Okay? So this precedes the guy that was born in the 13th century in Awa. Do you understand? Yes. This is the reason why we have all been born here together and encountered this Buddhism. Everybody's with me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Daishonin is truly the pillar of all humankind because his example of discarding the transient and revealing the true, not begrudging his life, uh, uh, makes, uh, makes it possible for all people to bring forth their own inherent Buddha nature because he was able to attain actual Ichin and Sons and we are able to attain actual Ichin and Sons. And that's the same predication for the original teacher, the, Bu the, the Buddha of Kuan Ganjo. Do you understand? Because the Buddha of Kuan Ganjo was able to attain Buddhahood, everybody automatically gets the same capacity. Okay? Because they're all the same. Do you understand? All right. So, um, herein lies the most profound significance of his assertions that the destiny of Japan depends solely on Nichiren. Mm. Right? So he wasn't blowing smoke. He was saying, you know, hey, this is just, that's the way it is. This is what opens the door for everything that's been looked at for 2,000 years, waiting for it to happen. Nitrin, and Nitrin is the soul of the people of his country from the actions of the Lotus Sutra, votary of Lotus Sutra. Opening, of the, opening the eyes is thus also a call to open your eyes to Nitrin. Open your eyes to Nitrin is who he truly is, the original teacher, the manifestation of the original teacher, the manifestation of the Buddha of Kuan Ganjo. The Jiju Yushi Norai of Kuan Ganjo. All right? Mm -hmm. That's really the source of all of this. It's not the 13th, just the 13th century priest. Understand that. Just like the, the origin of the Lotus Sutra is not predicated around 2,500-year-old uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. Okay? Shakyamuni comes into this world saying, oh, this teaching's existed way before I made my advent in this world. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. He talks about... Yeah. Many, many lifetimes, more, more than the sands of the Ganges rivers. So, continuing on page 8, opening our <coughs> eyes to the spirit of not begrudging one's life, because that is the essence of what took Nitrin across the line to victory. Not being afraid to die in order to uphold the true teaching. Opening our eyes to Nitrin means opening our eyes to the votary of the Lotus Sutra. You understand what he's talking about there? The Buddha of the latter day, mm -hmm. the original teacher, opening our eyes to the votary of the Lotus Sutra and becoming one ourselves. Okay? And therefore, also opening our eyes to the Lotus Sutra, to the teaching that says we too are the Buddha. Do you follow? In this way, multiple meanings apply to the phrase opening the eyes, as is evident in various passages in the opening of the eyes. I would like to now cite a number of specific passages where the Daishonin in effect urges us, open your eyes to Nietzsche. First of all, there is the well-known the well passage I quoted earlier that alerts us to open our eyes to Nietzsche's casting off the transient and revealing the true. On the 12th day of the ninth month of last year, 1271, between the hours of the rat and the ox, uh, 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., this person named Nietzsche was beheaded. It is his whole, it is his soul that has uh, come to this island of Sado, and in the second month of the following year, Snowbound is uh, writing uh, this to send to his disciples, his close disciples. 
This is the description of the evil age in the encouraging devotion chapter seems, pardon me, uh, the encouraging, pardon me, the description in the evil age of the, uh, the description of the evil age in the encouraging devotion chapter seems terrible, but one who cares nothing about oneself for the sake of the law, that's not begrudging your life, right? Has nothing to be frightened about, he's saying in that writing. Indeed, in this passage he is saying, open your eyes to the soul of Nitrin. The soul of Nitrin would be another way of saying the original teacher, his true identity. That's what he's trying to say, his true identity. You know, the guy that was born in 13th century Japan to the son of fishermen that became known as Nichiren Daishonin didn't originate nam myoho The original teacher originated nam myoho And Nichiren is a manifestation of that original teacher. But it doesn't begin with him talking about it in 13th century Japan. It precedes, it is the original state. It's nam myoho It precedes everything else. Do you understand? Everybody's with me, right? All right. Indeed, in this passage, he is saying, open your eyes to the soul of Nitrin. He essentially declares the ordinary person Nitrin was, dehead, was beheaded at Tatsunakuchi. It is the soul of Nitrin that is now writing the opening of the eyes on Sado. Soul here refers to, of course, the Buddha of limitless joy, enlightened since time without beginning. Who are we talking about there? The original teacher. All right? So everybody's with me, right? That's yeah. he just qualified what I said was correct. That is the true identity revealed by Nitrin when he cast off, the trans, off his transient status. So everybody understands that, right? He, now, tip of the spear, the original teacher. Now you've got to take nam myoho much more seriously than some priest throwing off some new kind of concept as he had been. You know, the bright light that saved him at Tassinakuchi, doesn't matter if anybody else has faith. Now he knows exactly what's up, what he's got to do with the rest of his life, and has complete confidence in the course of those events. Nothing can change them now. Once he's done what he's done, others will arise to support what's supposed to occur. His disciples will be there to carry it through. It is impossible for it not to occur. Okay? It was all accomplished on that night at Tatsunakuchi. All right? Um, here I would like to focus on the fact that in terms of the overall structure of the opening of the eyes, this passage comes right at the start of the section where the Daishonin explains how he read the Lotus Sutra with his life, especially the encouraging devotion, the 13th chapter. Now what's significant about the encouraging devotion chapter. You guys should remember this by now. What does the 13th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, the encouraging devotion chapter, discuss that's significant, that carries over even now, even though it's in the theoretical act, uh, 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 section of the Lotus Sutra? What is its significance? Encouraging devotion is always about the three powerful enemies. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that they're going to make fun of us and, and mock us. And, all, and oppose us. Do you remember? And yet we're still going to go through all that shit and do it anyhow. Do you remember the 20 verse line? Mm -hmm. from the th Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, especially encouraging devotion in the 13th chapter. In this passage, he declares that no matter how fearful the descriptions in the encouraging devotion chapter of the ways that the three powerful enemies will per persecute the practitioners of the correct teaching, these things are not in the least frightening to the soul of Nitrin. Okay? He knows that's the reason he made his advent. All right? In this way, he shows us a glimpse of the vast and fearless state of the Buddha of limitless joy enlightened since time without beginning. Everybody's with me? Yes. Okay? A life condition we can share in if we'll only attain actual Ichin and Sanzen. The encouraging devotion chapter details the terrible persecution, persecutions that will, will befall the votaries, plural, of the Lotus Sutra, 
in the evil age after the Buddha's passing, describing, for example, how the three powerful enemies will incite the secular authorities to repress the votaries. There is also a scene where a multitude of bodhisattvas numbering 800,000 million Nayudas make a vow to struggle with the spirit of not begrudging their lives when encountering such life-threatening persecutions. The encouraging devotion chapter contains the lines, we care nothing for our bodies or lives, but anxious only for the unsurpassed, but are anxious only for the unsurpassed way. It expounds that the intrepid spirit of not begrudging one's life and seeking solely to enable all people to enter the unsurpassed way to Buddhahood is a fundamental requisite of bodhisattvas. Yeah, you underline that one because he just said, if you don't do that, you're not going to get where I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It expounds that the intrepid spirit, what does intrepid spirit mean? The unstoppable desire, the unstoppable action, no matter what obstacles occur. Intrepid means you can't be slowed down. You can't be deterred. You can't be stopped. Okay? The intrepid spirit, that's the indomitable spirit that I will continue no matter what, of not begrudging one's life and seeking solely to enable all people to attain the unsurpassed way of Buddhahood. What is that? That's acquiring the same mind as Nichiren. That's functioning with the vow of the Bodhisattva of the earth. That is stage five of the six stages of practice. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You've progressed. You're no longer doing Namyoho Rengekyo for benefit. You're doing Namyoho Rengekyo as a disciple of the original teacher, as an extension with the manifest body of the Buddha to do the Buddha's work because you've been... You've, you've acquired the, the reward body to be able to perceive them. Are you with me? Yes. Is fundamental, is a fundamental requisite of bodhisattvas. So what's that say? Fundamental. Requisite. It's a requirement. It's a fundamental requirement of you as a bodhisattva of the earth to have been able to acquire this state of life. This state of life, the fifth stage, the oneness of mind with Nichiren to actually, to be an actual bodhisattva of the earth. Because prior to that, you're a theoretical bodhisattva of the earth. You've heard about what a bodhisattva of the earth is, and you think you chant nam myoho renge and you do gong and you've heard you're a bodhisattva of the earth. This is what makes you a bodhisattva of the earth. This is, I will never go Titan no matter what. This is the point in time you've crossed over, so that's actually not just a cheap uh, statement. Those aren't words. That's actually what your life will do. You would die first. Period. All right? In the letter from, in letter from Sada, which was written around the same time as the opening of the eyes, we've all read it, Nietzsche asserts that when evil priests seeking fame or profit conspire with ignorant officials to unjustly attack the votary of the Lotus Sutra, those with the selfless heart of a lion king can attain Buddhahood. Accordingly, we can read the phrase opening the eyes as including the meaning open your eyes to Nietzsche's spirit of not begrudging his life. What is that? Open your eyes to the vow of the bodhisattvas of the earth. Claim your true identity. Quit dwelling in the, in the realm of, the, of, the, of, the, of your status, of your transient status. Grasp Actual Ichin and Sons, and become the Buddha. Don't be a Buddha in theory anymore. Advance for the sake of the law. Prove to others that this can be done. Nam Yoho Rengekyo. All right? Do you understand? I'll read it again. Accordingly, we can read the phrase opening the eyes as including the meaning opening your eyes to nature and spirit of not begrudging his life. This is the original mentor. Okay, this is the life we should try to emulate in terms of spirit. And President Ikeda has. That's why we can try also to emulate President Ikeda's life because they're the same. It's the same spirit. The teacher of the latter day is a person who thoroughly battles all obstacles and devilish functions. Next, I would like to read the passage in which Nietzsche states his conclusion after discussing in detail how the persecutions he has encountered 
mirror the persecutions by the three powerful enemies described in the encouraging devotion chapter. In this passage, too, we can discern the meaning, open your eyes to Nitrin. The Buddha and Devadatta are like form in its shadow. In lifetime after lifetime, they are never separated. Since Shotoku and his arch, en arch enemy, Moriya, appeared at the same time, like the blossom and the kylix of the lotus, uh, is, if there exists a votary of Lotus Sutra, then the three types of uh, uh, enemies are bound to exist as well. Does everybody understand that? What's he stating? Unequivocally. Every time there's an opportunity for the tr true teaching to be revealed, there will be influences that try to counterfail and keep that from occurring. 100% of the time. 100% of the time. Okay? That's what the encouraging devotion chapter qualifies. That whenever these actions of trying to uphold the vow are taken, they will be met with persecution. That's why this thing that doesn't sound logical is so logical. How, were it not for the obstacles, you could not know it's the true teaching. Do you understand? That's the whole point. The true teaching triggers the <coughs> obstacles that validate it to be the true teaching. In the absence of these obstacles, in the absence of the three powerful enemies giving rise, there's no validation that why they occur has occurred. Why they occurred is to obscure and confront and, and, and try and defeat uh, the, the, the advance of the true teaching. That's the purpose of the three, of the, of three powerful enemies, right? To defeat the true teaching. So when they arise, why do they arise? They arise because the true teaching has re been revealed. Right. So if you're a true teaching revealer, you are going to confront the three powerful enemies. And in fact, when you do, that's when you know, I'm teaching the true teaching. Now this is counterintuitive to normal logic. You would think true teaching going to keep me safe, going to keep me no problems. I'm going to get everything I want. No, because a Buddha doesn't give a shit about that kind of stuff. Mm. A Buddha gives a shit about victory, about showing the power, about being an example. You can't do that in the absence of opposition. You know, you have to have opponents to kick their ass. You can't be an ass kicker if you don't have something to kick its ass. Do you understand? Yeah. And easy stuff to kick its ass is a lot of people can say I can do that. But three powerful enemies are very difficult to defeat. That's why only Buddhists can do it. Do you understand? So when they occur, don't be afraid. Don't be defeated. Faith, victory of gold. You will always win with that attitude. Why? Because that was already promised. If that doesn't happen, based on your doubt-free faith and reassurance that it will, based on the teaching, then the teaching's a lie. Mm -hmm. Understand that the teaching's a lie then. The teaching can never be a lie. That's your greatest, that's your ace in the hall in front of the Gohonzon on everything that you confront. As long as you confront it for the sake of defeating the three powerful enemies for the sake of Kosen Rufu, even though it's your personal benefit, you've still done your thing. Do you understand? And there's no way that the obstacle that you're chanting about can defeat you. There's no way you cannot get that benefit, regardless of the time or the circumstance that... That, that goes in between it and, it's, and, 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 and it being resolved. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? If you'll only have doubt-free faith, if you'll only continue, you will always defeat those obstacles, no matter how big they are. As Nietzsche did, as President Keita has, as each one of us has the opportunity to, if we learn how to practice correctly, with the correct wisdom. Um, he says here... Um, Okay, a teacher of the latter day is a person who thoroughly battles all obstacles and devilish forces. If, uh, and it's, it's set here. if there exists a votary of Lotus Sutra, then three powerful enemies are bound to exist as well. The three top paragraph on the second column, page nine. The three types of enemies have already appeared. Who then is the votary of Lotus Sutra? Let us seek him out and make him our teacher. As the Lotus Sutra says, to find such a person is as rare as for a one-eyed turtle to chance upon a piece of driftwood with a hole just the right size to hold him. It's virtually impossible to find such a teacher. All right? 
Let us seek him out and make him our teacher, Nichiren says. His conclusion is that the votary of the Lotus Sutra, who struggles dauntlessly against the three powerful enemies, is the correct teacher who will lead the people of the latter day to enlightenment. Only someone able to battle all obstacles and devilish forces can be regarded as the teacher of the latter day of the law. Nichiren qualifies in every way in that manner, correct? Yes. yes. As the Daishonin indicates when he says, if they devils did not arise, there would be no way of knowing that this is the correct teaching from the letters to the brothers. That's where that quote comes from. Those who rigorously uphold and practice the correct teaching in this evil latter age will be assailed by storms of obstacles and devilish functions without fail. Understood? Everybody understands that that's part of the faith. You have to mm -hmm. understand that's part of the teaching. When those things come, you don't cop an attitude, regret that they exist. Instead, you rejoice. That's where your power comes from, being so crazy as to like be happy that the shit hit the fan, and now you have to prove the power of the Mahanzan. When you have those kinds of things happen in your life, and it makes you happy because you're absolutely sure you're going to win, you are the Buddha. Only Buddhas behave that way. Frankly speaking, okay? That's the truth. That's Buddha wisdom, all right? That's the reward body kicking in. Um, without fail, the only way to liberate the people of the latter day of the law from fundamental suffering is to firmly establish the means by which the Buddha nature inherent in all, in all human beings can be manifest, manifested in each individual's life and in society. So what did he just say there? The only way to liberate the people of the latter day of the law from fundamental darkness is to awaken them, okay, to the Buddhism of the sowing. All right? Uh, this great path can only be opened by those who are able to establish a deep, strong faith necessary to defeat fundamental, the fundamental darkness inherent in their human life. Now, what is the, the defeating of the fundamental darkness inherent in their life? What is he saying there? What does that mean? Bad shit happened and you made it better? I'll read it again. Think about what he's saying here. He's saying, this great path can only be opened by those who are able to establish the deep, strong faith necessary to defeat the fundamental darkness inherent in human life. Self-reflect? Yeah, but I'll say, I'll, 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 I'll paraphrase it. This great path, what is this great path? Buddhahood. Buddhahood. In your actual, actual each and sense Buddhahood in your present form. Okay? Buddhahood in your present form can only be opened up by those who are able to establish mugi washing, which is necessary to defeat the devil of the sixth heaven, which obscures your understanding and perception of yourself as the Buddha. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Okay. That is because all obstacles and devilish functions are in essence manifestations of fundamental darkness, the devil of the sixth he sex, the devil of the sixth heaven, the inability to perceive your Buddha nature and the Buddha nature of others. That's what the devil of the sixth heaven fundamentally is, right? It's not bad things that happen to you. It's the darkness of not perceiving your Buddhahood. That's what fundamental ignorance is. It's ignorance of the Buddhahood that exists in your life exactly as you are. A teacher that does not indicate the importance of Battling fundamental darkness cannot be called the correct teacher for the latter day of the law, nor can a person espousing such a teaching be regarded as the teacher of the latter day of the law. Does everybody understand what he's saying there? What he's also qualifying there is that nobody else but Nitrin can qualify in this way. This is the only teaching that can qualify in this way. Do you understand? He's saying there is no other teaching other than this teaching that accomplishes what I just described in this paragraph that I reread three times. Do you, do you understand? Yeah. Mm. All right, so fundamental darkness originally referred to the fundamental delusion or doubt toward the mystic law that assails bodhisattvas who advance, 
who have advanced to the final stage of practice, right? That was that stage of near-perfect enlightenment. Remember, even they can be defeated by the devil of the sixth heaven. Yeah. Do you remember? All right. Even bodhisattvas at the stage of near-perfect enlightenment could stray from the correct path on account of this illusion or doubt. Everybody's with me, right? Mm -hmm. right. The latter day during which the Buddha predicts the pure law will become obscured and lost. What's the pure law? The Buddhism of the harvest. Mm -hmm. The great pure law is the Buddhism of the sowing and nam myoho mm -hmm. renge So understand that. Yeah. The latter day which, during which the Buddha predicts the pure law will become obscured and lost. In other words, the efficacy of the Buddhism of the harvest it will no longer work the way it did in the former and the middle day. All right? It's time for the Buddhism of the sowing. That's why it's to be used as a stepping stone, a transitional teaching to lead one to the Buddhism of the sowing. Everybody's with me? Mm -hmm. Is indeed a time when the correct teaching is obscured and, e and evil intensifies. Because the correct teaching exists now in a new teaching. Not the old correct teaching, the new correct teaching. Do you understand? Mm. It's the time for the Buddhas and the harvest to be propagated has now passed. It is no longer the correct teaching for the, for the latter day. Mm. Do you follow? Yes. And the teaching for the latter day was never the correct teaching for the former and middle day. Mm -hmm. All right? Two different inhabitants of, 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 of this Sahe world. Battling fundamental uh, is indeed a time when the correct teaching is obscured and evil intensifies. Battling fundamental darkness is an indispensable part of practicing the correct teaching in this latter age. So, what did he just say there? Battling fundamental darkness. What is fundamental darkness? The aspect of our life that obscures our perception of our own innate Buddhahood. Do you understand? That's fundamental darkness. So he says, battling our own ignorance of our true identity is an indispensable part of practicing the correct teaching in this latter age. If you don't pursue Buddhahood, you will never achieve it. This only comes because you decide to advance beyond Give me the box. Go to the box. Give me, give me, give me. I need some more stuff. Okay? It only occurs in going from stage one along the five, the six stages to stage six. It only comes in that advance. All right? That's why the Gohanzan stops just giving you that out of mercy. You can never go your whole lifetime in that kind of practice. You will go Titan. It will stop working. You will become disillusioned. You will become poisoned inside. You will quit. Because the purpose of you starting to practice was to achieve actual each and sanzen. Anything less than that was an expedient means. All right? So, is a, an indispensable part of practicing the correct teaching in, the latter, in this latter age. Hence, in the opening of the eyes, Nietzsche emphasizes two points. First of all, through the fivefold comparison, he clarifies what is the correct teaching of the latter day of the law. The correct teaching is the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, hidden in the depths of the Lotus Sutra and the doctrine of the original cause and original effect expounded in the lifespan chapter of the Lotus Sutra, uh, uh, the Lotus Sutra's essential teaching. Expressed more simply, it is the principle of the true mutual possession of the ten worlds, which is, which is, true mutual possession of the ten worlds is actual Ichinen Sanzen. Okay? Whereby in defeating our fundamental darkness through our pure and strong faith, whereby defeating our fundamental ignorance of our true identity, through Mugi washing, all right, we bring about the eternal state of Buddhahood in our lives as nine world common mortals in the Sahe world. We become Buddhas in our present form, in reality, and manifest the other nine worlds within our lives as Buddhas. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We flip it. 
from the tenth world being the obscured thing and living in the other nine, we are now awaken the tenth and manifest the other nine for the sake of life, for the sake of existing in the manifest form. Do you understand? We're no longer in the, nine world, in the realm of the nine worlds, though, are we? Because we now, no matter what nine of the, which of the nine worlds we're in, the tenth can always just boom. Oh, yeah, i got to go chant. Oh, yeah, I need to get in front of Bohunza. Oh, yeah, teaching says I should be fearless. I'm going to change my attitude. These are all aspects of the tenth world that occur within the nine. All right? There is no pure tenth where you're just holy. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It always occurs in the nine. There are some pretty lofty states in the nine. Okay? Nine, compassion of the bodhisattva, of learning, of realization. These are all higher than the lower six. All right? Where are we in terms of time, brother? Ten more minutes. Okay, so. All right, through the five, okay. Whereby pure, okay. Whereby in defeating our fundamental darkness through pure and strong faith, we can bring the eternal state of the world of Buddhahood to manifest in the other nine worlds within our lives. This is the teaching that enables us to reveal the world of Buddhahood within our other nine worlds and realize the attainment of Buddhahood in our present form. This is actually Ichin and Sanzen, right? And the attainment of Buddhahood in this lifetime, right? Okay, so this is also our casting off the transient and revealing the true. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Just like Shakyamuni, just like Nietzsche, and just like everybody that goes through this process. This is going through the 52 stages of practice. All right? This alone is the correct teaching of the latter day. What's he saying there then? The entire purpose of everything we do is for you to attain Buddhahood in your actual, in your, in your present form. The, that's the fundamental, all the rest of it is an expedient means to get to that point. This alone is the correct teaching of the latter day. How to achieve actual Ichin and Sanzen. That you are the Buddha exactly as you are and you always have been. And there's nothing more to do than to realize and then live that way by taking on the vow that someone that is awakened to that truth takes on. All right? Do you understand? That's the vow of the Buddha. That's the vow of the Bodhisattva of the earth. They're identical. The Buddha and the Bodhisattva of the earth are identical. There is no separation between the original state and the Bodhisattvas of the earth and the law that they propagate. That is the original state. Do you understand? Everybody's clear on this, right? Okay, so. Uh, this will, okay, secondly, he emphasizes the importance of making and maintaining a vow. Because if you're not doing this for the right reason, you're not going to actually achieve it anyhow. This is the fifth this is the fifth stage of practice. This is the oneness of the mind. This is the one mind aspect. When we talk about the one mind, this is the one mind. This is the one mind of Buddhahood, okay, that permeates your life. When you realize actual Ichin and Sanzen exists, is real, and you can access it through faith. Follow? Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, this is secondly, he emphasizes the importance of making and maintaining a vow. How many times have I told you guys that? How many times do I always go, I even have my own little thing I do. I always go like this when I say the vow. Mm -hmm. How many times have you seen me with my arm up and my, clench, my fist clenched? For years now, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're approaching it for any other reason, you're going to miss the point. Now, President Kate is very nicely, for, the, for my sake, putting it in unequivocal terms. The vow is everything. The vow is what makes you one mind with Nietzsche. That's what makes you a bodhisattva of the earth. Not as a pretty title name, doesn't mean shit. But to actually being a bodhisattva of the earth. And being a bodhisattva of the earth is being a Buddha. Mm. All right? Secondly, he emphasized the importance of making and maintaining a vow. The correct teaching of the latter day, hidden in the depths of the lifespan chapter of the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra. Now, what does he just say there? The correct teaching of the latter day does not exist in the text of the Lotus Sutra 
that was written for the former in the middle day. It is only qualified by the teachers of the latter day in the Buddhism of the sewing. It's hidden in the depths. It's not on the surface. It's not there for the people of the former and the middle day to, to discern because it's not there for them. Do you understand? All right. The correct teaching of the latter day, the Buddhism of the sewing, hidden in the depths of the lifespan chapter of the essential teaching of the Lotus Sutra, the teaching of Nichiren is difficult to believe and difficult to understand. This is Nichiren, that's a quote from the Object of Devotion for Observing the Mind. However, by making the Buddha's great wish for the attainment of all people our own, what is that? That is the vow, yeah. right? Yeah. So, he's saying, so he's saying, but by making the vow our own vow, by making that the center of our life, by making that the purpose of our advent or realizing it as such, we can establish our true identity as a common mortal, which is Buddhahood from Kuanganjo. Do you understand? We become Jiju Yushi Nyorai. We become Buddhas of limitless joy. Yeah. It's not an exclusive club only for Nichiren. We become just like him. We become true Buddhas. However, by making the Buddha's great wish for the enlightenment of all people our own and vowing to undertake the struggle for Kosun Rufu with a steadfast, unremitting spirit, as did Nichiren, we can forge and strengthen our faith and we can acquire the mind of Mugiwashi. We can acquire the mind of Nichiren. It is none other than Nichiren who cast off his transient status and established the great teaching for the enlightenment of all people in this defiled age. The enlightenment of all people, who is the teacher of the latter day of the law and the Buddha of the latter day of the law. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. While I already quoted the passage indicating the Daishonin's vow at the start of my lecture, I would like to cite it here again more fully. This I will state, let the gods forsake me, let the, all persecutions assail me, still I will give my life for the sake of the law. Each single one of you should have that same attitude. I sure do. Frankly speaking, without patting myself on the back, I read this, I read me talking it. This is I will state, let the gods forsake me, let all persecutions assail me, still I will give my life for the sake of the law. Whatever obstacles I might encounter, so long as persons of wisdom do not prove my teachings to be false, I will never yield. All other troubles are no more to me than dust before the wind. I will be the pillar of Japan. I will be the eyes of Japan. I will be the great ship of Japan. This is my vow, and I will never forsake it. Now, the way I read that in my life is that vow is to my master. Okay? I don't think I'm the original teacher, but as the original teacher's disciple, I have made a promise to propagate his teaching for the sake of others, to make them equal to us. He's already made me equal to him. Now my job is to show others how to make themselves equal to him as well. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right, so the above two points, the clarification of the correct teaching and the importance of making a vow comprise the backbone, the backbone of the opening of the eyes. I will discuss them more in detail later during the course of these lectures. How are we doing on time? 9.05. Huh? 9.05. Okay, we'll stop there and start next time with opening our eyes to Nietzsche's perseverance and compassion on page 11. You don't have to pick up my hand. Okay, people pick it up. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.